Welcome to a new episode of Let's Code a Linux Network Driver. In this series of videos I show you how you can write your own Linux Network Driver on the example of my simple SBI Ethernet device, the Z device. In my last video we have accessed the SMI interface from within our driver and we have added an Ethernet file to our driver. And in today's video I want to show you how we can add support for SMI access from the user space. So SMI stands for Serial Management Interface and this interface is used to access the registers of our Ethernet file. So over SMI you can read and write registers of our Ethernet file and this can be useful for configuring the file but also for reading out status information like if a link is up, which link speed was negotiated and so on and so forth. And if you are looking for a tool to access the file registers from user space, tool is the way to go. So here you can see it's hosted here on GitHub. I will put a link in the description down below. And here we can see how to use the Phi tool. So basically Phi tool supports three commands, read, write and print. We will only focus on read and write here. Here you can see some examples how Phi tool can be used. So here we are calling the read command and here we are telling the tool we want to read from the interface Ethernet 4. We want to read from phi address 0 and we want to read register 4. And a write command is also implemented which allows you to write to the Ethernet phi. Here as an additional argument you have to pass the value you want to write. And you can see this tool is, is written in C. We will take a look at the source code just in a second but before let's try the um, tool on the Ethernet phi which is embedded or on the Ethernet interface which is here on my Raspberry Pi. So let's navigate into the, my local copy of the repository and let's uh, use the Phi tool to read from Ethernet 0, Phi address 1 and let's read register 2. So I can see our value is returned here and this is how this tool works. Okay now let's take a look at this, uh, the source code. So basically these three parameters, the Ethernet interface, the file address and the register address are stored in a struct within this program. Um, yeah, let's open up the file tool and you can see here we have we are including file tool and here you can see the struct lock and the struct lock we are saving the interface name, the file ID or file address and the register address. Okay, and if we take a look at the main function, first we're doing some argument parsing and then here depending on the command, read, write or print, we are executing different functions. So let's take a look at the phi tool read function. So here once again we're doing some argument parsing and then we're executing the function phi read and at this file read returns a value and at the end we are printing out the value. This is what we have seen in my terminal just a few seconds ago. So let's see how this file read function is implemented. Here we go. So here we are calling another function called file operation and here we are passing a weird looking define here. We will I will tell you what this define does just in a second. And if you're taking a look at phi write function, it looks very similar. The only difference here is, okay, we are returning a value in phi read and the command here is different. Okay, so let's take a look at this phi operation. So what we're doing here is we are opening a socket, then we tell the socket we it should be used for the interface which, which interface name we have passed as an argument then we from the socket or no from the um, interface so here we are defining a struct from the type interface request and this interface request has a field from the type struct MIIO control data um, and here we are creating a pointer which points to this. Then here we are setting up this MII struct with the file address, the register address and the, value, the input value and the output value. 
So the value in is relevant for writes, the while out is relevant for um, reads. Yes. And then what we're doing is we're doing an, an IO control to the socket we have opened here with the command we have passed to file operation which is different for reading and writing an MII register and then we are passing the um, interface request data structure. And at the end in case this was a read we are retrieving the value from this well out field and saving it in this pointer here. Okay, so basically for reading and writing file registers, all we have to do is using an IO control with the corresponding command. And now let's implement this IO control within our set device driver. Okay, so let me navigate to my set um, repositories folder. And here we have the source code for our set driver. And first thing I have to do is in the set MDIO init function in which I'm adding an MII bus or an MDIO bus and in which I'm detecting a phi, I have to add one line of code. So the struct net device has a field phi dev, which is a pointer to the Ethernet phi for the network device. And to this, and this pointer I have to set to the phi which was probed here. And this is stored in the private data of my network driver and in this phi field. So here I'm setting the phi dev pointer of my struct net device. Okay, and then what I will do is I will create a new function. I will call set IO control and in this function I will handle the IO control for my set device. And this IO control has the following arguments. The first argument is from the type net device net and is appointed to my networking device. The second argument is from the type struct interface request, which we have seen in the file tool already. I will call it request. And the last command or the last argument is the command which should be performed by IO control. But before we are passing or we are parsing the command, let's do some checks. So the first thing I will check is if I have a valid Ethernet file available, because if not, there is no sense reading from it. And in case there is no Ethernet file, I will return error in valid. Okay. Then the second thing I will try or I will test is, I will check if my net interface is, oh, what did I have done? <laughs> I will check if my net interface is running, because if not, I don't want to access the SMI bus, or I can't access the SMI bus. Okay, and then I will do a switch command here, and then I'm handling the various commands. So in case the command is, The command is SIOCGMII5, or the command is SIOCGMII register. Maybe let's even copy this. So I think this is get MII register and this is set MII register. So we should be using this function for the read and this function for the write. And then what I will do here is I will return phi MII IO control. So this is an IO control function already written for IO control, already written for um, phi's devices. Then here I have to pass a pointer to my phi device. I have to pass the um, interface request, I pointed to my interface request and I have to pass the command. And in case this IO control is called with a different command, I will just return error operation not supported. Okay. 
And the last thing I have to do is here in my struct net device operations, which bundles all the operations which are supported by our networking driver, I will add a new operation which is called NDO Ethernet IO control. And here I have to pass a pointer to my set IO control function. Okay, so that should be it. Let me try to compile the driver. Let's see if I made some mistakes. Yes, I did. Yes, net is undeclared here. Okay, so let's fix this. Yep, here I have to use priv net phi device because I only have a pointer to my the private data of my networking interface, not to the network inter or network device. Okay, so now I should be able to compile the code, hopefully. Yes, this is looking good. Then I will spawn a second window here. And I will follow the kernel lock on this window. Here I will apply my device tree overlay. Okay, then I will insert my set driver. And you can see here, while probing the SMI bus, a lot of SMI reads and writes were already done. Maybe let's actually clear this window here and follow the lock once again. And now if I run IPL, I can see my set interface being available here. And now let's navigate back to the Phi tool and use the Phi tool to read from the interface set zero. I want to read from Phi address zero and I want to read register address two, for example. And you can see here, we are getting the print here. We are doing an MDIO or SMI read to fire address zero, register two, and the value which was returned is zero, uh, seven, which is the exact same value we see here. And if we're reading register three, we are getting back the value from register three. And for example, if we try to read from an invalid fire address, like fire address one, which is not here, we are getting back all ones. Okay, and what we can also do is we can do a write. Therefore, let's read out register zero. So currently we have this value in this register. And now I will write this value in here. So let's do a write. So we can see here now MDO write was called. And if we're doing a read again, now the new value is in this register. Okay, cool. So that's how to implement the possibility to access the SMI or MDIO registers from user space by using PhiTool. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So I guess that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.